po natin ang makapangyarihang pangalan ng Panginoong Jesus. The name of Jesus, the foundation of the church that is eternal. Kaya napakahalaga because there is no other name, it is important to clarify the meaning of the name of Jesus and the foundation of the church which he heads. What was the role of Peter, the apostle, in founding the church? What was the role of Jesus? And who is the foundation of the church? Yan po ang ating pag-aaralan sa tulong ng banal na Espiritu, ang pamagat, a small rock and the big rock. Salamat o Diyos dahil kayo ang aming pundasyon. Turuan niyo po kami, linisin, bigyan niyo kami ng karunungan para makapamuhay kami ayon sa katotohanan. So be our speaker, Father. Speak powerfully from your throne of power and glory. Lift up your name. Liberate your people. Heal us. Teach us. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. We will be reading as main verses, Matthew 16, 13 to 20, all from the contemporary English version. Let's begin with verse 13, a very important event. When Jesus and his disciples were near the town of Caesarea Philippi, he asked them, What do people say about the Son of Man? Galing sa pagmimisyon ng mga disipulo, at sa panahon na yun ay hindi pa ibinubunyag ng Panginoong Jesus kung sino talaga siya. Nanguhula, nangangapa, nakikiramdam ang mga disipulo kung bakit siya ay nakakapagpahupa ng ulan, ng bagyo, ng hangin, nakakapagpagaling ng mga may sakit, pero hindi pa niya sinasabi, derechahan, kung sino siya. In other words, after a day's work, he asked them, Who do people think or say I am? Anong sinasabi ng mga tao tungkol sa akin, sino daw ba ako? At wag po nating lilimutin sa buong usapan na ito, na ito ang topic ng buong Matthew 16, 13-20, who Jesus was. The topic was Jesus and who He really was. At that point, the Lord has not yet revealed His true identity. Kaya nga sasabihin ng mga disciple, Who is this man that even the waves and the wind and the storm obey Him? Verse 14, The disciples answered, Some people say you are John the Baptist, or maybe Elijah, or Jeremiah, or some other prophet. So kung ano-ano ang nadinig ng mga disipulo na sinasabi ng taong bayan tungkol kay Jesus at kung sino siya. Pero puro mali. People mistook Jesus for someone else. Now the topic is still who Jesus was and some people's mistakes about who He was. Verse 15. Then Jesus asked them, But who do you say I am? Eh, anong sabi ninyo? Anong sinasabi niyo kung sino ako? Matthew 16, 16, Simon Peter spoke up. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Only Peter spoke up and answered. Alam niyo po itong si Pedro, siya laging unang nagsasalita, siya itong tumatalon sa tubig, siya maglalakad sa tubig, siya iiyak, siya unang mga ngako na hindi magtataksil. He was very human and I love his humanness. Impulsive pa nga. But this time, He is right. Sabi niya, kayo ang anak ng Diyos. Kayo ang Mesiyas. Kayo ang tagapagligtas. Ano pang sasabihin ko sa mga tao ko? Kundi yun. Tama ba siya o mali? Matthew 16, 17-18, Jesus told him, Simon, son of Jonah, you are blessed. You didn't discover this on your own. It was shown to you by my Father in heaven. So, I will call you Peter, which means a rock. Ang talagang pangalan nitong si Peter ay Simon. Simon na anak ni Jonah. Simon bar Jonah. At sabi nitong si Peter, Kayo ang Kristo, ang anak ng Diyos. Sabi naman ni Jesus, At ikaw naman, tatawagin kitang Simon. Peter. Which means a rock. So, tama ang sagot ni Peter. Di ba? Si Jesus talaga ang Messiah, siya ang Son of God. Hindi siya si John the Baptist na nabuhay muli, hindi siya si Elijah bumalik, hindi siya kung sino. Siya ang anak ng Diyos. Simon Peter was right. That Peter was added later after this incident. His knowledge about Jesus' true identity was a direct revelation from God. 
Sabi ni Jesus, alam mo kahit kailan hindi ko sinabi sa iyo yan, wala pa akong sinasabihan yan. Tanging ang ama lang ang pwedeng magturo sa iyo niyan. Pinagkalooban ka ng karunungang galing diretso sa ama sa langit. You know, knowledge could be known through normal quest. Tayo mga ordinaryong mga tao nag-aaral para matuto through inquiry, through research. But knowledge could be very specially received by divine revelation. Ipinagkakaloob sa nagkakaroon ng kaliwanagan. Kaya ang Diyos ay liwanag at ang tapunan niya ng liwanag na ito ay nagkakaroon ng kaliwanagan or enlightenment. So do not shy away or do not deny what is new. It was very new to call Jesus the Son of God, but it was the truth. It was divinely revealed. At dahil sa binigay ng Ama sa Diyos na karangalan kay Pedro na siyang unang pinagkatiwalaan ng katotohanan na si Jesus ay hindi lang ba sa tao, kundi anak ng Diyos, dahil pinarangalan siya ng Ama, pinarangalan din siya ni Jesus. Jesus honors Simon with a second name, isang bansag, isang palayaw, Petros, which is a small rock. We are reading the New Testament, and the New Testament was written in Greek, and Petros was what he was called, small rock. It was already a translation of the original Hebrew or Aramaic, but we read Petros in the New Testament. Therefore, Simon Peter means Simon the small rock. Parang tayo mga Pilipino, mahilig magbansag. Si Petrang Kabayo, si Mariang Makiling, di ba? So ito, Simon the small rock. Si Pedrong Munti. After honoring Simon, Jesus returns to the original topic. And the topic was, sino ba talaga siya? Matthew 16:18, On this rock, I will build my church. And death itself will not have any power over it. What is the rock? The fact that I am the Messiah. The fact that I am the Son of the living God. I will build my church on that reality. Because I am the Son of God, because I am the Savior, I can build the church. And because I am the Son of God, I am and I should be the foundation of the church that I will build. There's an interest point here because later on, some religious people will claim that Peter was the rock. That Peter became the foundation of the church. So the interest point is this. Jesus used the Greek word Petra or big rock or boulder to describe himself and the truth about himself. Sabi niya, and I tell you, you are Petros, small rock, and on this Petra, the big rock, I will build my church. It's important to read it in Greek. Because when you read it only in English, and I tell you, you are Peter, the rock, and on this rock, I will build my church. So people think Peter was the rock on which the church would be built. But the original language is, and I tell you, you are Petros, the small rock, and on this Petra, the big rock, meaning the truth that I am the Son of God, I will build my church. Yan ang limitation ng mga translation, especially from Greek to English. Halimbawa yung words na agape, which means godly love, phileo, which means family love, and eros, which means romantic love. In English, they all translate as love. Ganon din yung Petros at Petra, pareho lang na rock. Kaya pwedeng makalito. Because we have the same translation handicap with rock. The English translations of Petra and Petros are the same rock. There is no distinction. You go back to Greek and it becomes very clear. Pwede itong makalito sa gustong malito o sa gustong manglito. Kung sino talaga ang foundation ng church. Sariwain natin ang mga bato-bato sa Greek language. What are the sizes of rocks in Greek? Yung lithos in Greek means a very small stone or pebble. Yung pwedeng pangsung ka. Maliliit. Petros means rock, bigger than lithos, but these are the rolling, unstable stones. Pwede mo matapakan mo, madulas ka, kasi hindi siya nakakapit at maliit naman siya. But Petra, the one used by the Lord Jesus to describe the foundation of the church, is rock, immovable boulder. Magkakaiba yan. Talagang ganggabundok na bato. Isang piraso lang. Yung Petros, yung batong ganggakamao. 
yung litos, yung ganggadulo lang ng daliri. Kaya lang, rock lahat yung translation in English. To be emphatic, Petros was used for Peter. He was never referred to as Petra in the Old Test, in the New Testament. In fact, it was Jesus who was clearly referred to as Petra. 1 Corinthians 10, 1 to 4. Friends, I want to remind you that in the Exodus, all our ancestors ate the same super spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink which flowed from the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock, the word Petra was used, was Christ. It puts all discussions to rest. The rock was Christ. The Petra was Christ. The Petros was Simon. But it is Petra, the big rock, that will be the foundation of the church. Christ, not Peter. The church was built upon Petra or Jesus, not upon Petros or Peter. Sabi niya, you are Petros, you are Simon, and on this Petra, myself, I will build my church. Now, rock or Petra was used as symbol of God in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 34.2, He is the rock, Petra. His works are perfect and all His ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright and just is He. Certainly, this cannot refer to Peter. It refers to the divine, to the Father God and then to the God, the Son. First Samuel 2.2, there is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides Him. There is no rock, Petra, like our God. Rock as Petra would not be used by Jesus to refer to Peter, a mere man. But later on, sadly, some religious systems would claim that Peter is the foundation of the church to justify tradition that has already developed. Why would Jesus not make Peter the foundation of his church? Just a few verses away from the foundation, from the discussion about the rock, the same chapter, Matthew 16, Jesus speaks about his suffering and death, and then a very interesting revelation about Peter is given here. Matthew 16, 21 to 23. From then on, Jesus began telling his disciples what would happen to him. He said, I must go to Jerusalem. There the nation's leaders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law of Moses will make me suffer terribly. I will be killed. But three days later, I will rise to life. Peter took Jesus aside and told him to stop talking like that. He said, God would never let this happen to you, Lord. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Satan, get away from me. You're in my way because you think like everyone else and not like God. A few sentences after the rock teaching. Sinabi ng Panginoon, pupunta ko sa Jerusalem, mamamatay ako at mabubuhay na muli. Sabi ni Pedro, hindi po mangyayari yan. Huwag kayong magsalita ng ganyan. Hindi papayagan ng Diyos na mamatay kayo ng ganyan. At sabi ni Lord, akala mo naman, concern na concern ka kung magsalita ka. Pinipigil mo ang crucifixion ng death ko. E di pinawawala ng salvation para sa mga tao. You are not thinking like God. You are not speaking like God. Sabi niya, Satan, umalis ka sa harap ko. Papano gagawing foundation ni Lord si Peter kung tatawagin niyang Satan a few sentences later? Jesus calls Peter Satan. Not because he was Satan himself. But at that moment, he was saying satanic verses. He was saying ideas that were from hell and not from heaven because of his human nature. He wasn't a bad person, but being an imperfect person, he could be the spokesman of the devil even for just a few minutes. He was sincere, but he was sincerely wrong. Then in just another instance, Jesus would prophesy Peter's betrayal. Sabi ni Peter, hindi po ako magtataka sa inyo. Oh, sabi niya ganun. Bago tumila ako ng manok, nakatatlong beses ka na na mag-deny sa akin. Bakit gagawin ni Lord na foundation ng church na yung alam na alam niyang ganun kahina? How and why would Jesus make such a man the foundation of the church? How could religious leaders who claim to succeed Peter be infallible or cannot be mistaken when Peter himself that they claim to succeed committed grave errors? Some religious leaders will claim that when they speak ex-cathedra in behalf of the church, they cannot be wrong. 
And they say they descend from Peter, which is very questionable because there is no such transfer of power or office or authority in the Bible. But they say, they claim that they come from Peter and Peter's office, and yet they become infallible. Well, Peter was fallible. How can people who succeed an office be inerrant or incapable of mistake when the very person that they claim to have founded that office committed grave errors recorded very clearly in the Bible itself. 1 Corinthians 3, 10 to 11, God was kind and let me become an expert builder. When Paul was putting up churches everywhere, he said this, God was kind and let me be an expert builder. I laid a foundation on which others have built. May nauna na, sabi niya. But we must each be careful how we build because Christ is the only foundation. Sabi niya, huwag niyo ko masyadong purihin. Nagpatong lang naman ako ng additional bricks and hollow blocks doon sa foundation na nandun na. So lahat tayo dapat maingat sa pagpapatong. Kasi si Jesus ang pinapatungan. Siya ang kaisa-isa at tanging pundasyon ng buong iglesia. So Jesus would build His church on this Petra, on the fact that He was the Messiah, on the fact that He was the Son of God, He had all the power and all the authority to start a church and to become the foundation of it. So is the rock the person of Peter? The verses say no. Will the church be founded on the apostles Peter? No. But claim in Matthew 16 that Jesus made Peter Pope has no biblical basis. It has to be corrected. And then they claim that there is apostolic succession, that Peter was made Pope and then Peter appointed representatives of himself and then from generation to generation, you have a long line of unbroken chains of Popes that cannot commit mistakes. Popes that made or unmade saints. Do you know how do you become a saint? When the Pope calls you a saint, you become a saint. But do you know that you can also be unmade? That there were many saints that were decanonized. Saint Christopher for once was decanonized in 1969. Marami pong mga, mga santo't santa na dinedeclare na santo't santa tapos biglang hindi na pala santo't santa ngayon. And then they call it, wala na sila sa calendar of feasts. Why? Because in modern times, when there is so much... It's discovery and so much research and so much historical records coming out. This kind of stories can no longer be supported. That's why they have to be retracted. But yes, there is canonization and there is decanonization, sweetly called being stricken off the calendar of feasts. Di naman kasi tinatawag directly na decanonization. So will the church be founded on the truth about Jesus? Yes. Sabi ni Peter, you are the Messiah the Son of the Living God. Because of that, you are the foundation of the church. Will the church be founded on the person of Jesus? Yes. Because this is what the Bible says. Magtataka po tayo, eh, paano na invento yung divine succession? Paano ginamit yung Matthew 16 na pang justify sa isang absolute office of religious and spiritual power? Hindi po nauna itong verses na ito to give birth to that office. Nagkaroon na ng office, historically, na-developed nang na-developed, and it was already very powerful. It could no longer explain why it was so powerful. It could no longer give an excuse why it was exercising absolute power over all the believers. And so these verses were conveniently used to support that. But you know that only have it to do is read the Greek original and you will know that Peter was not the rock. Ganun lang kasimple. But who reads the Greek original or who reads even the English or the Latin versions of the Bible? That's why truth sets free. Kailangan ng tao mag-aral para maliwanagan ang isip. Ang mga mito po, iniimbento para i-explain ng isang nag exist na na phenomenon. Ganon din ang legend. Halimbawa, no hindi na maipaliwanag ng mga Japanese emperors why they had absolute power, they had to invent a myth that their kalololohan was anak of the sun goddess. Kasi wala, kaya kami may power over you, anak kami ng Diyos. Ganon din ang mga Roman emperors. When they could not explain why they had become so powerful, they invented a myth that they descended from the gods. Ganon din ang mga pharaohs sa Egypt. 
They had to invent a myth that their kalolalalahan descended from the gods. Because how would you justify power when it was all absolute? And so the power of these religious leaders, when they became so absolute and people began questioning them, they had to go back to the verses and make a legend out of it. Para maipaliwanag kung bakit ganun sila kapangyarihan. Halimbawa, yung nakakatawang alamat ng kalamba. Bakit daw naging kalamba ang bayan ng kalamba? Dahil daw merong isang kastilang naligaw, naghahanap ng daan, may nakitang babaeng may dalan na banga na ipinapatong sa kalan, kaya kalan banga. Okay? At sinabing, ano ang pangalan ng bayan na ito? Ito namang babaeng ito, napaka-stupid ah. Akala niya, itinatanong ang pangalan ng daladala niyang palayok. Sabi niya, kalamba. Kalamba nga. Sabi naman ng kasila, entonset, kalamba, ang pangalan ng bayan na ito. Do you buy that stupid legend? Ganon din ang pangalan ng bakuod. Bakuod na galing sa bakod. Etc. Etc. Laging there's a Spaniard who is lost and there is a clueless Filipina na hindi na intindihan ang tanong, nagbigay ng pangalan, therefore the name of the town was born. But, you know that Kalamba's name had been there forever until the people began to say, bakit nga ba Kalamba? And then they invented the legend to satisfy themselves and say, ah, kaya naging Kalamba. Ganon din ang legend ng infallible offices of religious leaders. Nung hindi na nila maipaliwanag kung bakit, they had to invent a myth from somewhere to satisfy themselves and everybody who asks. But now is the age of knowledge. It is the age of enlightenment because information is available. Knowledge is available to all. Hindi na yan sinosolo lang ng mga religious leaders. Kaya ang dapat ang mga tao makawala mula sa mga kagilagilalas na kasinungalingan na ipinromote ng libong taon. Jesus is the foundation of the church. Jesus is the rock. With all due respect to Peter, he really was given a very special office and we all respect Peter for that. But it's too much to give him the honor to be the foundation of the church because he is a mere man like you and me. Ilagay siya sa tama, karangal-rangal, dapat igalang, dapat mahalin, pero ang dapat sambahin isa lang, si Jesus, siya ang dakilang bato kung saan nakapatong, nakatungtong ang iglesia na nasa kanyang pangalan. Now back to Peter, Matthew 16:19. Sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, dahil ipinagkatiwala sa iyo ng Ama ang katotohanan na ako ang kanyang anak, may ipagkakatiwala naman ako sa iyo. Because God the Father honored you, I will also honor you. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And God in heaven will allow whatever you allow on earth. But He will not allow anything that you don't allow. So sabi ng mga nagkiklaim na sukseso sila ni Peter, you see, kami yan. Kahit anong payagan ni Pedro at payagan namin, pwede sa langit, ang pakawalan ni Pedro, papakawalan na, na ang pinap- at pakawalan namin, papawalan ng langit. Ang itali namin sa lupa, itatali sa langit. Kami yan. Now, the topic is Peter. Back to Peter. And the special honor and power that Jesus gave him. No doubt, he was chosen and honored. But another way, not what we have been made to believe. What was he authorized to allow? Ano kaya yung ibinigay ni Jesus sa kapangyarihan sa kanyang, eto ang susi sa kaharian ng langit, ang pagbuksan mo, papapasukin. Eto ang tali, ang kalagan mo, kakalagan, ang itali mo, itatali. Nagkano ba siya ng absolute power about everything? At yung bang power niya, naipamana niya to a long line of successors na meron din ganung power, na infallible, na daig pa si Pedro who was fallible? I propose, do we look at it this way? Commanded by God, Peter allowed the eating of unclean food. It's a major, major doctrine. And commanded by God, Peter brought the gospel and church membership to Gentiles. So I propose that this key to open heaven and to loosen or pakawala ng mga tao was given by Jesus to Peter and Peter allowed the Gentiles to become Christians and at the same time to keep their cultural identity which at the time was a big no, no, no. Was this what Jesus meant? Was this what Peter could allow and be affirmed in heaven? Ito ba yung pagpinayagan ni Pedro, papayagan na sa langit, na payagan niya ang mga taong kumain ng lahat ng dating hindi pwedeng kainin sa Old Testament? 
Napayagan na ang mga Gentiles sa makisalamuha at sumali sa mga Hudyo na sumamba na dati hindi pwede. Malaking malaking bagay yun. Kasi kung hindi nangyari ito, Jews lang ang saved. Jews lang ang anak ng Diyos. Pero sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, eto ang susi. Buksan mo ang langit. Ang pagbuksan mo, papapasukin. Acts 10, 9 to 13 is very interesting. Peter went up on the roof of the house to pray and became very hungry. While the food was being prepared, he fell sound asleep and had a vision. He saw heaven open and something came down like a huge sheet held up by its four corners. In it were all kinds of animals, snakes and birds. A voice said to him, Peter, get up, kill this and eat them. Kakilakilabot na bagay para sa isang hudyo na mapagsabihan ng isang tinig na nagmumula sa langit na kainin lahat ng mga hayop na ito na ipinagbabawal ng kautusan at kaugalian. Bawal lahat yon. Acts 10, 14 to 15. But Peter said, Lord, I can't do that. I have never eaten anything that is unclean and not fit to eat. The voice spoke to him again when God says that something can be used for food. Don't say it isn't fit to eat. Sabi na, ko hindi ko po magagawa, kasi tana, nung ka, never, na kumain ako ng bawal na pagkain, marumi. At sabi ng boses ng Diyos, pag tinawag kong malinis, magdahan-dahan ka, huwag mong tawaging marumi. Peter says, no, tradition. But God said, basta, eat it. And allow people to eat it. Kakalagan niya yung pagbabawal sa ganitong malaking bagay. Bubuwagin niya ang pader na naghihiwalay mula sa mga Hudyo at mga Hentil. Mula sa konting Hudyo at lahat ng tao sa planeta na Gentiles. Malaking bagay yun. Huwag niyong mamaliitin. It's a great honor for that authority to be given to Peter. Now, Acts 10.16. This happened three times before the sheet was suddenly taken back to heaven. Dahil itong si Pedro ay tradisyonal, mahirap kumbinsihin, tatlong beses inulit ng Diyos ang vision. Para hindi mapagkamalang panaginip lamang o bangungot lamang. Sobrang linaw. Three times. Anong naging kasunod noon? Acts 10, 17-22? Magkarugtong pala yung Matthew 16 at Acts 10 na yan? Peter was still wondering what all of this meant when the men sent by Cornelius came and stood at the gate. They had found their way to Simon's house and were asking if Simon Peter was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Holy Spirit said to him, Three men are here looking for you. Hurry down and go with them. Don't worry. I sent them. Peter went down and said to the men, I am the one you're looking for. Why have you come? They answered, Captain Cornelius sent us. He is a good man who worships God and is like, liked by the Jewish people. One of God's holy angels toward Cornelius was sent for you so he could hear what you have to say. Si Cornelius, Jew, Roman soldier, pero makadyos, mapagkawang gawa, mabdalanginin. Datuwa sa kanya ang Diyos dahil mapagbigay pa siya at mapagkawang gawa. Nagpadala na ang hell. Sabi ng Diyos sa kanya, alam mo, Gentile ka, sumasamba ka sa akin, pero may kulang. Dapat maunawaan mo at makilala mo si Jesus sa aking anak. Ipasundo mo si Pedro sa ganitong address. Siya ang pinili ko, nakakausap sa'yo. Papuntahin mo sa bahay mo, ipapaliwanag niya sa'yo ang lahat-lahat para makompleto ang iyong spirituality. Dati, bawal makihalubilo. Pero dahil pinayagan doon sa vision, nakainin ni Pedro na hudyo ang mga pagkain ng mga Gentile at ngayon inuutosan pa siyang pumunta sa bahay ng Gentile something they never did. Nung si Jesus ay ipinasok sa bahay ni Pilate walang sumama sa kanyang mga accusers kasi hindi sila pumapasok sa bahay ng Gentile. Ngayon tinatawag si Peter na pumunta sa bahay ni Cornelius? Unthinkable! But the vision happened three times and God's instruction was clear. Go with his men. Acts 10, 27-28 as Peter entered the house, he was still talking with Cornelius. Many people were there. And Peter said to them, You know that we Jews are not allowed to have anything to do with other people. But God has shown me that He doesn't think anyone is unclean or unfit. 
So the clear lesson of the vision was applied. Sabi ni Lord, I'll give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Open it for the Gentiles. Whatever you bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth is loose in heaven. It doesn't mean na si Pedro o ang mga nagkiklaim na successor niya ang magde-decide sinong pupunta sa langit at hindi, sino ang saint at hindi, sino ang saint at hindi. That's an overreading. It is not supported by Scripture. So Peter lose the Gentiles so they too could enter heaven. Tulad natin na Gentiles. Hindi naman tayo Jews eh. Ang laking bagay, hindi maliit. At hindi natin minamaliit si Peter by saying na hindi siya yung rock. Ang laki talaga ng binigay ng ministry. Keys to the kingdom of heaven. But the door to heaven was opened only once for all. Hindi nakatayo ngayon doon si Pedro. Ikaw, pasok. Ikaw, hindi. Katulad ng nakikita natin sa mga kwento at mga cartoon. Hindi si Aser. Hindi siya gatekeeper. He was used by God to open the door of heaven to those who could not enter it by Jewish traditions alone. That's a great ministry. Peter was the original disciple to the Gentiles. Siya ang nauna talaga nagturo ng mga bagay na yan. Long before Paul claimed that he was an apostle to the Gentiles. Nauna na si Pedro at siya ang tunay na diretsyong inutusan ni Jesus. Acts 10, 34-35 Peter then said, now I am certain that God treats all people alike. God is pleased with everyone who worship Him and does right no matter what nation they come from. Ang laking pagpapalit ng paradigm ito, ng pananaw. Sabi niya ngayon na pagtanto ko at tiyak ko na na walang itinatangi ang Diyos. Hindi ko mo Israelite ka, itatangi ka na. Sino man, basta gumagawa ng tama, kumikilala sa Diyos at sumasamba, mamahalin niya tatanggapin kahit anong lahi o bayan ang pinanggalingan niya. What a beautiful teaching. What a beautiful reality. Acts 10, 44-48. So, nagturo si Pedro tungkol kay Jesus. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit took control of everyone who was listening. Some Jewish followers of the Lord had come with Peter and they were surprised that the Holy Spirit has been given to the Gentiles. Now they were hearing Gentiles speaking unknown languages and praising God. Peter said, These Gentiles have been given the Holy Spirit just as we have. Kung nagkaroon ng speaking in tongues sa upper room sa day of Pentecost in Jerusalem, na ulit sa Samaria, sa Judea, sa lugar ni Cornelius. Kasi sabi ni Lord, You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Sabi, kung yung speaking in tongues na kineclaim natin sa atin lang ibinigay, nangyari rin dito. Di ibig sabihin, pare-pareho lang tayong recipient. Ngayon, pare-pareho na tayong anak ng Diyos. Whatever you lose in heaven, on earth is loosed in heaven. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I am certain, sa pagpapatuloy niya, that no one would dare stop us from baptizing them. Peter ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and they asked him to stay on for a few days. Kasunod agad, bautismo. They had become members of the church. Walang hiningan si Pedro ng permiso mula sa Jerusalem, mula sa kanyang mga kasamahan. Kasi siya naman talaga yung spokesman ng church. And besides, it was God who commissioned him directly to bring these people into the church. The acts were clearly approved by heaven because the Holy Spirit was given. What Peter allowed, heaven allowed. Yun ng kahulugan ng Matthew 16. Hindi for thousands of years later, kung anong maisipan, payagan at hindi payagan, ng mga nagkiklaim na successor niya, eh ganun na rin ang desisyon ng langit. That's an overstretching of the verse. And so much abuse were done because of that reading. But remember, this idea to go to the Gentiles was the idea of God. It was authorized, therefore it was honored. But Peter could not just do anything and heaven would have to comply and approve it. No, it was approved because it was pre-approved. Peter was operating within the limits that God had given him, therefore it was approved but by heaven. Hindi siya binigyan ng blanket authority at hindi sinabing magkakaroon siya ng successors na may blanket authority ren forever and ever. Peter was the first original apostle 
to the Gentiles. Acts 15, 6 to 7. The apostles and church leaders met to discuss this problem about Gentiles. They had talked it over for a long time when Peter got up and said, My friends, you know that God decided long ago to let me be the one from your group to preach the good news to the Gentiles. So, sino ang apostle to the Gentiles? Si? Si Peter. Clear sa scripture. Minsan lang ginamit ang susi. Binuksan ang pinto para sa lahat. Hindi ito close open. No human giving, being was given the power to choose or to decide who would go to heaven and who would not. That decision is given to the individual as the Holy Spirit enlightens the individual. No religious office on earth has the authority to decide who goes to hell and who goes to heaven. That is an overstretching and a misreading of Scripture. Yes, Peter was given the first exercise of power to bind or to lose on the issues of the Gentiles, becoming Christians and members of the church, and at the same time keeping their cultural identity. But the church was not founded on Peter. Yes, the opening of the church to the Gentiles was given to Peter as a privilege because he was given the Father by the Father the privilege to know who Jesus was. But it was limited to that. Peter was given the authority to bind or lose on issues of Gentile diet and cultural identity. No more, no less. Hanggang dun lang yung kina yon, hanggang dun lang yung authority na yon. It was a great power and authority, but it was only mission-specific. Para lang dun. Parang special power of attorney may limit. Hindi forever and hindi for everything. It was only for that specific mission. It was not a blanket authority on every issue under heaven. It was not to make or unmake doctrine. And definitely it is not to make saints or unmake them. It is God who decides who His saints are. Peter was not made Pope. That's what the verses tell us. Peter was not the foundation of the papacy. People never had that authority. And his successors could not have it when he himself did not have it. No one who claims succeeding an office that did not exist could have such an authority. Why? Because the great big rock was and is Christ. And Christ is more than enough to be the foundation of his church. The church of the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior, who died, lived again, and rose and went back to heaven, cannot be given to a mere mortal. To give it to Peter is to take it from Jesus. It is an honor that you never give to Peter because it means it's an honor that you will have to rob from Jesus. You cannot give to Peter what rightfully belongs to Christ, who is our Savior. But we should respect Peter for the great revelation given to him by the Father and the great ministry given to him by Jesus. But we should not make him the rock because he was a small stone. The church, the teachings of the church, salvation, Christian morals and ethics will be and must be founded on Jesus alone because he is the rock, not on anyone else. Not even on some prophet before him or a disciple or apostle or religious leader or teacher after him. Not on teachings that are not directly, essentially, and contextually founded on the teachings of Jesus. Mga kapatid, huwag tayong malito. Si Jesus ang anak ng Diyos. Siya ang namatay para sa atin. Siya ang nabuhay na muli. Siya ang umakyat sa langit. Siya ang ating tagapagligtas. Siya ang dapat nating pakinggan at sundin. Ano man ang turo ng mga propetang nauna sa Kanya, ng mga disipulong sumunod sa Kanya, at mga religious leaders na naging mga leaders matagal na bago si Jesus ay nawala sa mundo at bumalik sa langit, lahat ng yan dapat salain sa turo ni Jesus. Sukatin sa panukat ni Jesus. Dahil si Jesus ang standard, siya ang tanging patakaran. So pag may sinabi isang propeta, tapos sabi ni Jesus, hindi ganyan. De, hindi. Pag may sinabi si Jesus na A, kahit sinong disciple niya ang magsabing B, katulad ni Peter, sabi niya, hindi kayo mamamatay. You know, Satan, umalis ka sa harap ko. Hindi dapat pakinggan kahit disciple. 
Lalo naman kung religious leader lang nung 1100, 12th century, 13th, 14th, 17th, 2011, dapat pinapakinggan lang natin sila dahil lang itinuturo nila galing kay Jesus. Hindi dahil meron na sila ibang turo na lampas sa itinuro ni Jesus. Habang sumusunod sila kay Jesus, susunod tayo sa kanila. Pero they are not allowed or permitted to teach beyond what Jesus said. Therefore, the chemistry, the electricity, the power of the church must derive from the Spirit of Jesus and not from someone else. So test even Old Testament prophets. Because they were humans. They committed mistakes too. Only Jesus was perfect. Test even New Testament disciples. Ito ang si Peter. Napasabihan pang Satan eh. Ang close-close na sa kanya. Test apostles, church, so-called fathers, writers, teachers, and very specially, test post-New Testament teachers and teachings. Yung mga nakasara na ang Biblia, nagtuturo pa, laging itest. Anong sinabi ni Jesus tungkol sa sinasabi ng teacher na yan? Ganyan ba talaga ang sabi ni Jesus? Huwag tayong padaya. Against the teachings and examples of Jesus alone, do we base doctrine? So, church, you have an assignment. Know Jesus. The more you know Jesus, the less you could be deceived. Know the teachings of Jesus. The more you know the teachings of Jesus, the less you will be deceived and misled by the teachings of others, by their fantasies and myths and legends. We must base our spirituality on the teachings of Jesus alone. Assignment Church, compare all religious and spiritual teachings of everyone else with that of Jesus. Live by, live on the words of Jesus because He is the rock. He is not only the rock, He is also the living water, the Lamb of God, the door, the way, the truth, the life, the light of the world. Kanino ka pa? Hindi natin minamaliit si Peter. Don't ever get it wrong. Peter will always be honored for the honor given him by the Father and the Son. But the honor that belongs to the Son alone should not be shared with someone else. Be blessed like Peter. Be blessed by the minister of Peter to the Gentiles by which we have been blessed. But know Jesus as the Son of God, the Savior, and get personal knowledge of Jesus. Tin niyo si Pedro, binigyan siya ng revelation ng Ama. Ba't naman tayo hindi bibigyan ng revelation ng Ama? How to understand and know Jesus as recorded in Scripture. Know Jesus. Declare it. Live by Jesus. Let Jesus live in you. Let Jesus live through you. Sabi ni Lord, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. We say, give to Jesus what is Jesus, the foundation of the church, and to Peter what is Peter's, the honor of opening heaven to Gentiles like us and setting free the peoples not only of the Gentile world but also of the Jewish world from the dietary laws of the Old Testament. The rock is Jesus. Salamat na lang. Salamat dahil siya pala ang foundation. Hindi siya nagkakamali. Mahal niya tayo. He died for us. Let's honor Him. Let's also honor Peter. Let's honor all Christ-like Christian leaders of any religion or denomination as long as what they teach is within the teachings of Jesus, as long as what they teach do not contradict the teachings of Jesus. Let's honor all religious leaders. Let's be ethical. Let's be respectful. But worship belongs only to God and authority belongs only to Jesus, not to any human person Authority can only be transferred to human persons when they are in the shadow of Jesus and when they teach what Jesus teach. Ama namin sa langit, salamat. Hindi nyo ipinagkaitan nyo ka isa-isang anak na si Jesus para maging rock. Para maging matibay na bato na sandigan ng aming pananalig. Patawarin mo kami kung kami man ay nagkaroon ng mga pagkakamali ng mga perceptions. Ituro mo sa amin, Panginoon, kung papano Palalawakin ang kaalaman that Jesus is the rock. He is the foundation of the church. And that we should not rob Him of His glory by giving it to anyone. Father, teach us. Correct us. At nawa hindi lang kami matuto ng ganito mga impormasyon. Kundi dahil si Jesus ang bato at sa kami Kanya nakatungtong sa Kanya, turuan mo kami na mamuhay ayon sa Kanyang katuruan, magmahal, umibig, magpatawad ayon sa Kanyang turo. 
at maging mabuti kami sa aming kapwa. Pagbulay-bulayan natin mga kapatid at ipagpasalamat that Jesus is the rock, our Savior, our salvation, the way, the truth, the life, the living water, the light of the world. Worship the Lord in silence.